Well, good morning and welcome to this Jammies with Jesus on this uh, Thursday, December 17th, one week before Christmas Eve. Um, as you can see, I'm back inside because it's cold and rainy outside, or, or maybe not rainy, but cold and damp. Um, today got off to a little bit of an unusual start. I woke up uh, much earlier than I normally do because I had some thoughts about this coming Sunday's sermon, and uh, I've learned enough now to know that if I go back to sleep, I'll forget what I thought about. So got up, and as a result of that, I was, not as, um, I was thinking a whole lot more about my sermon this weekend than I was about this morning's devotion but one connecting point, and this will be from um, Luke's gospel. So the first chapter, uh, we'll be singing about the, or singing, we'll be, we'll be um, reading and uh, I'll be preaching on the Annunciation with Mary uh, this Sunday. But this is um, a parallel that happened earlier, just a little bit before that in chapter one of Luke's gospel. So in the days of King Herod of Judea, there's a priest named Zechariah who belonged to the priestly order of Abijah. Yes, Abijah. His wife was a descendant of Aaron and her name was Elizabeth. Both of them were righteous before God, living blamelessly according to the commandments and regulations of the Lord. But they had no children because Elizabeth was barren and both were getting on in years. Once when he was serving as priest before God and his section was on duty, he was chosen by lot according to the custom of the priesthood, to enter the sanctuary of the Lord and offer incense. Now at the time of the incense offering, the whole assembly of the people was praying outside. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. He will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth, for he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedient to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know this is so? For I'm an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. The angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe my words, which will be fulfilled in their time, you will become mute, unable to speak until these things, until the day these things occur. So a couple of really neat things I learned this morning in, in studies about this. Uh, one is that, uh, I, I mean, I always knew it was a special thing that, uh, that Zechariah was able to participate in uh, doing the, the incense at the, at the altar. Um, but I had no idea that this was likely the one and only time uh, that he would have done that. And that's because as they drew by lots, they, the priesthood of the, the Leviticus um, priesthood was divided up into sections. I think there was 24 sections. Um, and just by nature of how often you would be called to serve and then how often your name might come up, be drawn for a lot, it really said that this was likely the one and only time he served in this particular role as a priest. Um, the other interesting insight is that here you are in the temple. Here you are in the place where um, God's glory fills the space. Um, you don't expect God to really show up. <laughs> and when God sends an angel, you're terrified. Yeah, you know, um, and I think that speaks so much to uh, my perspective and maybe yours as well, is that um, the, these midweek Advent services with Holden Evening Prayer, it, it is such a beautiful time. But I um, recall it was Tahina Rash, who's a LCM graduate of years ago, who she described her call story, which happened at University Lutheran Church. She was 
invited by a friend to come to the midweek meals. Uh, she began showing up. Why not? It's college and it's a free meal. Got connected with the community. Then came to worship, even though at, at that time she was not Christian. Uh, but then met God in worship. And in her own words, and I'll paraphrase them, so some of her words mine too. When she spoke of the most recent youth gathering, she said there she was in the sanctuary, University Lutheran Sanctuary, 111 Sloan Street, um, feeling this incredible sense of God's presence. So much so that she began to look around the other sanctuary and think, are you feeling what I'm feeling? Is this going on? But no, this, this powerful experience she was having in the midst of our regular Sunday morning worship was God intruding on her life, calling her. Uh, so she's a pastor now. Uh, and that's not what all calls lead to, but in her situation, it, it did. So you have Zechariah um, in this unique role uh, coming and, and Gabriel showing up. Uh, Gabriel uh, is also named in Daniel. So almost 550, 600 years before this, Gabriel's angel that shows up in the book of Daniel. Uh, an angel and Gabriel will be the one, as you'll hear this coming Sunday, who also uh, comes to visit Mary. Uh, angel, uh, the Greek word angelos means messenger or one who is sent. And again, Gabriel is running holy errands for God to bring these messages of good news, both to John and Zechariah, and then to Mary and Joseph. There's so many parallels and also um, unique differences. Uh, Elizabeth was thought to be barren of old age, so how could she bear a child? And Mary, a young maiden, uh, which we also translate sometimes as virgin, how could she have a child? Well, the answer in both circumstances is, uh, with God, all things are possible. Uh, the other thing that struck me as being odd is that uh, Mary's question is, how can this be? And Angel Gabriel responds to her and does not strike her mute. <laughs> but apparently either maybe Zechariah's tone of voice or something when, when Zechariah asks, how will I know that this is so? Kind of hearkening uh, uh, back to the Abraham and Sarah story. Well, I don't know, maybe angels have bad days also, but Gabriel said, um, but now because you did not believe my words, uh, you'll not be able to speak until this day of fulfillment occurs. Um, so again, just a lot of very interesting things to chew over. Um, at their root, though, what I try to do both with sermons, with teaching and Bible study, is um, really get down to, um, well, but what now? What what meaning does this have for us? And a couple things I draw out just for me, and I'd encourage you to ask those same questions as you read scripture. Is what what questions or what things are speaking to you in your life at this time? Is once again this notion of God showing up of God doing the unexpected, of God working through unexpected people in unexpected situations. Um, that's a big one. And then also recognizing that even though life and history has so many ups and downs and, and progress reversals, the overall trajectory of God's story is from creation to full redemption. And we participate in this small segment of time. Archbishop Romero of El Salvador, um, again, I'll roughly paraphrase something he talked about, was, was coming to peace with knowing that any meaningful work that we're involved with, we will not see the fruition of in our own lifetime because it will be far bigger than our own lifetime. But we do what we are able um, when we are here along this road uh, that so many have traveled before us and um, more will travel after us. A couple a couple prayer notes and then um, and then I'll close with a word of prayer. One, a great celebration. 
Christopher Gerardo, who had been hospitalized for COVID-19, was able to come home yesterday, and he posted on Facebook about what joy just to be at home with um, his wife, his partner, Ellen, uh, amongst their cats on the couch, just being able to enjoy something other than hospital food and just being together. Uh, so that's a very much of a highlight. Uh, literally, the next post on my Facebook uh, feed was um, was that a friend of mine, colleague, pastor, Pastor Tuli Beresford, who has preached at University Lutheran before, it was somebody in her family, it was her, her sister-in-law in Africa, succumbed to COVID-19. Uh, she had been sick. Then she said she had been feeling better, and they had high hopes that she had... Um, defeated the virus, but no, she she did in fact die from COVID-19. Uh, so to have the Beresford family in our prayers for, for um, their grief and mourning. Um, and then last shout out is simply that Pickens County is still top of the list for infectious counties in the state of South Carolina. Um, Oconee County had been 18th, I think the last I looked, now it's climbed up to 13th most infected, you know, rate of infection currently in the state. Uh, Greenville County, I think comes in at number eight. So basically we're in a hot pocket here in the upstate. So please continue to be very diligent, very careful. Such great and hopeful news about the vaccine coming, uh, already being administered to the healthcare workers, some healthcare workers. So please keep safe for a few more months. Be extra, extra diligent um, so that we can get back together and really rejoice. So let me close with prayer. Holy God, we give you thanks for the gift of your scripture, these stories through time who um, convey their sense of awe and wonder and surprise that you're showing up um, sometimes in the place we should most expect it, but least do, and at other times in completely um, out of the way places. Help us to be attentive to your call. Help us to be attentive to your spirits nudging. Help us be attentive to the messengers, be they angelic messengers or siblings in Christ or neighbors, that we hear their voices and, and through them hear you speaking. Uh, we do pray for Thule and her family as they grieve the death of her sister-in-law. We pray for those healthcare workers and others who are currently being administered the vaccine, that they continue to be safe till they're fully protected. Help us to do our part in minimizing uh, the impact of this virus. We give you thanks for the healing for Christopher Gerardo and pray for his ongoing recovery, as well as Ellen and their friends who, who also had contracted it, but with less severe symptoms. Um, be with us this day. Help us to see your handiwork around us, to give you thanks and praise and do what we can to love and serve our neighbors. And these things we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, Pastor Josh will be with you tomorrow morning, Friday, and then um, looking forward to seeing you Sunday morning for our worship service, 9 a.m., Facebook Live, and then it'll be um, up on our YouTube channel as well. God's peace be with you. Bye-bye.